Welcome to your end of the week parish news. I'm Father Michael Slovak, pastor at St. Michael the Archangel here in Dunseith, North Dakota. And tomorrow is Palm Sunday and the start of Holy Week. And so I've already been getting calls. When and where can we get palms? Well, we have only one Palm Sunday Mass where all the palms will be blessed and that will be Sunday morning. And so the palms will be available by 10 a.m. And so at 10 a.m., before 10 a.m., by 10 a.m., they will be on two tables. And if the weather's nice, I'll put it outside the church. If not, I'll open the doors of the front. I'll have it just inside the doors. But on those tables, there'll be three things for you to pick up. Of course, the blessed palms. The second is our bulletin, which we'll talk about in a minute, our bulletin for the week. And finally, we've decided to give out the missalettes. There's no need of us having missalettes in our pews when our pews are empty. And so we're going to keep a few of them but the majority of the missalettes we'll have in a box with the palms and with the bulletins so that if you want a missalette in order to follow the Mass at home, whether you're watching the Mass on EWTN or watching our Mass or watching the Fargo Mass, the missalette will help you more at home. And so tomorrow, by 10 a.m., all that will be available. By 11, we should have the Mass posted on Facebook and on YouTube and uh, well and on our website stmichaeldunseith.com. Now again the, the reason that we have it on YouTube is for those of you that do not have um, computers or anything. If you have Netflix, if you have a smart TV or a streaming device, you can usually find YouTube there and do a search, St. Michael Dunseith, find our channel, and you'll get all the videos right there. Um, all the masses, all these parish news updates. Um, I've been doing a Divine Mercy Chaplet. All of that's there on YouTube. But if you don't want to use Facebook, there's also the website. So all of this is to reach you at home. And um, we are in the middle of... A connecting campaign to make connections again a reconnecting campaign and so um, this few days ago we had a parish council meeting and what I became aware of I get to see all these people viewing my Facebook posts and liking and commenting and I love you all but I came to realize that there are still people out there that don't use the internet that don't use Facebook that have not seen a bulletin in the last two or three weeks since we went into isolation. And it's very important to me that we reconnect those people with our church. And so um, what's happening is I want everyone to be getting a bulletin. And uh, if you use Facebook, then it's easy. If you can use our website, stmichaeldunseeth.com, then it's easy. But if you don't, um, if you would like our bulletin emailed to you, I ask that you email me at fathermichael, frmichaelslovak at gmail.com. If you email me and say, I would like the bulletin emailed, I'll put you on a list. I already have about 25 people that I'm going to email the bulletin out to every week. So... If you don't use the internet but use email, email me and I will email you the bulletin. Now, if you don't use the internet at all, not even email, this is where I need the people that are watching this, the people that are getting the bulletin, to reach out to your family members and friends that you know are not connected. And when you do that, ask them to call me at 244 um, Five seven three eight, two four four five seven three eight, and if I got it wrong, it'll be saying something on the screen right now. But um, that's the church number which forwards to my cell phone. 
we will be putting bulletins in the mail and so that you'll get a physical copy. So if you don't use the internet, we will mail the bulletin to you. Um, there was a point that I really wanted to go around visiting people and dropping bulletins and palms and all of that off. But um, it's best that we stay put and we do everything from here and let you come to us as much as you can, even though we're all in isolation. So again, my goal is to reach out to everyone, to have everyone have a bulletin, whether over the internet, through email, or have us physically send you one. Or you might want your family members to pick one up here. We will be keeping <laughs> bulletins, physical ones, outside um, the rectory or church in an igloo, in an igloo cooler, all week long. So if any family member can drop, stop by and pick up a few, that would be great as well. Also, keep in mind that we're opening the church on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays from 2 to 7. And when the church is open, there'll be bulletins in there. So even if you don't want to come to spend time in the church, you can stop by the church, go to the door at the top of the ramp, which is the only one that'll be open, and grab a bulletin just inside the door. So that's another way that family members can stop by without getting near anybody and grab some bulletins to bring to their family members that, that might be disconnected. So that is a huge campaign that's going on right now. Um, what's next? Uh, our masses, we have been going through an evolution here. So two weeks ago, we only were doing audio homilies that we were sharing every day. This past week, we were doing videos of the homilies that we're sharing every week. Starting Palm Sunday, which is tomorrow, we will be doing full tapings of our daily Mass and posting it. And that'll start tomorrow on Sunday, and it'll go all the way through Wednesday. And after Wednesday, with the start of Holy Week, we'll take the final evolution or evolutionary step, and that is to start streaming our masses live. So Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and the Easter Vigil will all be streamed live. And after they're streamed, there'll be a copy of them on Facebook and YouTube to watch later. But that's just the start. So after that, Sunday masses and daily masses will all be streamed live. And um, that way you can feel like you're a part of the Mass if you take the time to get up early to join us to watch it live. And um, I've been very impressed with live. I've been doing a daily 3 p.m. Divine Mercy, and it tells me who's watching. And they make comments. And I'll be honest, the first time I did it, somehow my mom was one of the first people to jump on. And my mom barely knows how to use a computer. I'm sorry to say that if you're watching this, Mom. And so I was just deeply touched. It felt like I was preaching in front of you, all of you again. It felt like I had that connection back of being a pastor with his flock right in front of him. And so I'm excited that by Thursday, we will be doing everything live. And so um, that's some major wonderful things. Also, um, yesterday on Friday, we taped and edited the Stations of the Cross. There is what I consider my most professional editing job ever, a wonderfully done Stations of the Cross on YouTube and Facebook that it features our church, but with each station, there's a close-up of the station. There is uh, titles that come on before it, and it has me going station by station with the same stations that we usually do here. It turned out beautifully. So I recommend checking that out, especially if you love to do the stations as a devotion. Our confessions, we have been searching for a safe way to do the confessions because we were told we couldn't use the confessional anymore. We couldn't use anything that was confined space. So I tried last week just waiting outside since it was beautiful weather 
And, um, and we only got one confession that week on last Saturday. Today, with the snow, with the bad weather, I brought my car around. I had heard that Belcourt, that St. Anne's had been doing this and, and it had been working. So I tried it and it worked well. It worked very well. I had a confession, um, my first confession through a car window, but it was private. I wore an Everhart to snow cap. So when I heard someone pulling up next to me, I'd pull it down so that, and then when they would come by, I would ask them, is this face to face or is it anonymous? And if it was anonymous, I left the blindfold on the snow cap down. It worked great. And so we, um, I'm going to continue doing this. Of course, when the weather gets well, we can go back to having just two chairs out there. But this uh, way, you're, I'm out of the elements. People can come up and it's confined. Um, I think it works very well. So I would like to invite you Wednesdays and Saturdays from 2 to 4. I will be sitting out there in my car that you can just pull right up if you would like confessions. And if you wanted to call me and set an appointment, I'll immediately go to my garage, get in my car, and be there waiting if you'd like to pull up. It's drive through confessions is what it is. But it's worked. it works a lot better than I expected. And so... Um, even though we can't be indoors, even though we can't be within six feet of us, each other, even though it needs to be private, it seems to do all of those things. So I invite you back to the sacrament of confession, um, whether Wednesday or Saturday at from two to four, or whether you make an appointment. And um, of course, there will be no confessions on Holy Saturday. So this coming Wednesday will be the last confessions before um, the Triduum, before Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter's, well, the Easter Vigil, Easter Sunday. So, um, I now put that picture that you saw in the last update. I have it in one window and Mary's Immaculate Heart in another window. And I'm hoping to show my support. I'm going to get some red paper and make more hearts to go around it. So you'll see our heart windows expanding over this next week, over Holy Week, to show our support of everyone in isolation and that we will get through this crisis together. But it also puts everything around Jesus and Mary, that we need Jesus and Mary in our lives right now to get through this and to grow stronger in faith throughout this whole thing. Finally, I would like to just mention that we've had three meetings now, all using Zoom. Zoom is a teleconferencing um, app. I um, went ahead and got a subscription to it, but it means that as long as you have a smartphone or a tablet or a laptop or a computer with, its, with, a, with a camera and mic on it, that you can have as many as 100 people all in the same room, looking at their faces and talking to each other. The meetings were amazing. And I would be even be interested in just saying, let's have some time, let's have a meeting. Anyone who would like to join, join now, here's the meeting ID, and let's talk to each other. But um, until this crisis finishes, this is gonna be a little bit of the best case scenario for us seeing ourselves in a group. And so um, we had our parish, parish council meeting over Zoom. I had a deanery meeting with the other priests of the area over Zoom. And we even had a catechist meeting for CCD over Zoom. And so um, I'm planning to try and do a Bible study over Zoom and try and get my RCIA to have um, our our week our biweekly meetings over Zoom as well, but um, I just wanted to inform you that I would like to see, to invite people. Maybe our Altrea, we might do an Altrea over Zoom soon, 
and just a chance to talk to each other, to pray together, and to check in with each other, more than just by voice, but by, by face. So it's a beautiful technology that's out there that, um, that we're tapping into. And so just to end and conclude today, thank you for listening to this whole 15 minutes. I don't know how it feels like, well, it feels like I'm barely talking to you. I don't know how 15 minutes went by so, so fast. But the key thing right now is for us to stay connected, first to God and then to each other. And I'm hoping that we can get a bulletin to everyone in our parish and have that connection to the church, that the minimum is that everyone get a bulletin, whether digitally, physically, or emailed out. And so if you know anyone that is not connected, that hasn't heard from our church in two or three weeks, please uh, talk to them, invite them to call me or email me, and I would like to touch base with them to see how they're doing, but also to find a way to get the bulletin to them. And I have even more ideas in the future as the weeks progress. And of course, we're praying that this will be over soon, but I'm not standing still. Every week, I hope to get better at something and have a new tool to reach out to you. So may God bless you. May God grant you peace in this time in a closeness with himself and may he also bring you closer to your families and may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit amen god bless you all and tomorrow begins holy week